I was a pretty new Christian, I talked to my pastor, and I was trying to figure out why our church was a, such a wonderful ministry. Many people coming to the Lord, many of those people going on into serving the Lord full time as pastors and missionaries. Uh, and I knew it had started very small. I, I asked, Pastor, when did your ministry really take off? And he, he just thought very briefly, and he said this, when I stopped telling people what to do and started telling them who Jesus was. And I, I really heard that, and I, I decided to make that a principle for my life and my leadership. I didn't just want to tell people what to do, I wanted to lift up Jesus and tell them who he was, and then Jesus takes care of the motivation. But as a, as a young leader, I, I know I, I did far much of that telling people what to do. But, and that is not leadership. That's not leading. That's telling people what to do. It's very different. But we think it's leading because we, we all follow cultural models of leadership. And if we're leading in the same way our culture has told us and has showed us how to lead, we are almost sure to not be leading according to the way Jesus did. Why do I say that? Because of what he said in Matthew chapter 20, he said to his disciples, you know that the rulers of the nations lord it over them and exercise authority over them. You should not do that. He's saying there's two leadership styles. One, the leadership style of the nations, which is ordering people around and therefore devaluing them as human beings. And there's another way, which is the kingdom style of leadership, which he defined as coming to serve. So we talk about servant leadership in every language in every church, and we have no idea what it means. Let me give you a little bit different vocabulary to help you see. Um, the, the way of leadership of the nations we can call transactional. It's based on heavy authority. I tell you what to do, or you get punished for it, or rewarded. The, the punishment may be shame. It may be public humiliation. It may mean just discouraging you. It may mean something more severe, according to the organization and the culture. The reward may be finances. It may be promotion. It may be public approval of the boss. But it's, it's a transaction. You do this for me and you do it right and I'll give you this. If you do it wrong, I'll do this. There's a second way, the kingdom way, we could call transformational. It also has authority, but not, it doesn't lord it over them in the words of Jesus. And it's not telling people what, what to do. It's saying, I'm going to tell you the values. I'm going to give you a job description. And you go ahead and do it in your time in your way, and I'm going to trust you. I'm going to trust you to do it right. And it's a very high trust type of organization and a very high trust type of leadership. And I think this is how God leads us. In my leadership in the University of the Nations, I don't run around telling people what to do. I don't have enough time. And if I am always telling people what to do, I'm keeping them in immaturity. What I try to tell them is what needs to be done, and I help them with the equipment they need to do it, and then get out of the way so they can do it. I think my job is to encourage them and to help them if they come up against a wall, because that often happens in organizations. They, they don't know the answer, they're running into someone being difficult, and I can help them get through that wall. And that means for me as a leader, I have to be available. I have to be in touch with them, I have to be communicating, and very practically, I have to answer emails many hours a day. And this is how I see leadership in our university.